Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom smart controls or macro controls for synthesis and sound design. So I'm always trying to find new ways to improve my workflow, whether that be composing or creating sounds that I like or mixing or mastering or whatever. So I'm always trying to optimize my workflow. And one of the ways I found that is really helpful is to build custom presets with smart controls of the most common sort of sound design things that I do uh, when I'm working with electronic music and, and particularly working with synthesizer sounds. So using smart controls allows you to essentially create customized effects chains that can be set up in advance so you don't have to do anything with them. You just pull up the preset and everything is automatically mapped. All of your controls are mapped. Um, all of the most common controls that we, you would use are mapped. And you can even do this with third-party instruments and third-party uh, plugins. You know, maybe I'm always adding filters or maybe I'm always adding distortion uh, on my synth tracks. I may want to build smart controls to automatically control those filter elements or those distortion elements. Uh, and you can do this with any audio plugin. You can do this with third party plugins. You can do it with MIDI effects and you can even do it with the instrument itself. If there's a particular instrument that you like to use a lot in a particular preset you use a lot, you can build your smart controls into the channel strip setting so you're not having to open up all of these plugins and apply the sound design here. You can do it all down here. And you know, then if you need to go back in here and do some minor changes to other parameters, you can. So that's the, the whole goal here is that you can just pull this up as a preset and everything's right there mapped and ready to go. You just have to load up whatever, whatever synthesizer you want to use. So I'm gonna start from scratch. So I'm gonna reset my channel strip and I'll show you how to do this. So you're gonna pull up a software instrument and what you wanna do is determine what are the effects that you like to use most when designing your synth sounds. So for me, that is high pass and low pass filters. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up the auto filter on here. And I'm actually gonna load the, up the auto filter twice. There we go. Um, and you, you can, for now, you can start with an instrument. I'm just gonna start with the stock retro synth patch here. Although, as you can see, it's gonna try to load up some smart controls automatically for us, which may or may not be what you wanna do. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and replace all of these. But I've got my first filter here, and then I've got my second filter. And let's say that I want to have a high pass on the first filter, a low pass on the second filter. I don't wanna use the envelope or LFOs in these, but you could. You could assign any of these controls if you wanted to. I'm gonna use the pre-filter distortion and the post-filter distortion over here. So the pre-filter distortion will come before the high pass, before the low pass, and then the post-filter distortion will come after the low pass. Okay, so now the next step is we need to start mapping these controls. And to open up your smart controls, if you don't see them already, you can press B to hide and show your smart controls. You can also click this button right here, which will do the same thing. And you want to show the inspector within the smart controls. So to do that, you just click the I button right here. And you want to make sure you're on track. So this is going to show smart controls for the selected track. Now, there are different presets you can choose here. This just defines how the smart controls are going to look. You can use this one. This is one that was... Uh, this came from uh, RetroSynth. I'm actually gonna use Modern Black 12. And this one's cool because it also has on-off buttons in it. So I've selected 12 because ultimately I'm gonna have more than just eight controls. Some of these have, uh, some of the default ones just have eight. So I'm gonna, use, uh, I'm gonna use 12. Now, as you assign these, you're gonna see that some of these are already pre-assigned. We're gonna fix all of that. As we load up other settings, we're going to be replacing uh, the mappings that are on all of these. So what you do is you just click the learn button here. You click on a particular knob in the smart controls, and then you go and move that control in the plugin. 
So then I can move on to the next one here. I can move the cutoff. So there's our high pass filter. Move down to this bottom one here. This will be the pre-filter uh, distortion. And this one will be the post-filter distortion. So now when I move these, you'll see this controls the low, uh, the high, the low cut or high pass filter. This one controls the low pass filter. This controls the pre-filter distortion and the post-filter distortion. So what you can do is you can click on each of these with learn mode turned off and you can rename them. So I'm gonna call this one HPF cutoff. I'll call this one LPF cutoff for low pass filter. I'll call this one pre distortion. I'll call this one post distortion. And there we go. We got our first four parameters mapped. Now I also like to put these sort of in the default position, just like so. So with the distortion, we're gonna pull these down. And one thing that can get a little bit annoying with the smart controls, if you're not familiar with using them, is you have to make sure you click on the control, then move it. You can't just click and drag. You have to click to select it, then you can move it. Although you can assign these to your MIDI controller if you like. So here's another option. These little buttons can be used for toggling on and off. So if I want to, I could select the on off button, click learn, and I could make this toggle that filter. And I could do the same thing over here. Select the button, learn, toggle the filter. So now I have an on off control for the filters. There we go. I'm gonna keep those on for now. And I could do the same thing for the distortion. I could select this, click learn, click the on off button for the distortions. There we go. And so now I can turn on or off and you have to remember to turn those on when you're actually using them. Okay, so those are our first few parameters. Okay, so next I'm gonna add the Tremolo plugin. I'm gonna go ahead and just select the mono Tremolo preset, and I'm gonna go ahead and sync this to a 16th note to start. This is an effect I love using on synthesizers. It just helps me to get some motion out of a synthesizer. Um, and it can also kind of shape the envelope, uh, especially if you're working with an arpeggiator. So what I could do is I'll click on this here, click learn, and I'll learn the depth of the tremolo. And then I'll click on this one, click learn, and I'll select the smoothing. And so what this is ultimately going to be is tremolo depth and tremolo shape. So I'll rename this one trem depth and trem shape. And then I can also build in an on off button here if I wanted to, I could turn the entire plugin uh, off, I can bypass it just like so. The only thing is with this one, with the bypass, it's when it's on, it means that the bypass is on. If it's off, it means the plugin is active. So what you may have to do if you, if you bypass whole plugins is go into the parameter mapping here. And what you're gonna do is just invert the control. So now on means tremolo on, off means tremolo off, okay? So I've got those in there. Let's set the shape all the way down and the depth all the way down. Again, I like to put them at their starting positions where, with no effects because we're gonna save this as a preset and we may wanna use this on multiple different instruments. So I may not want to start with a bunch of effects in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assign a few more effects here off screen and I'll be right back uh, because the process of mapping these things is a bit time consuming, but ultimately we're gonna save this as a preset so it, you do a little bit of work up front and then you never have to do it again. So I'll be right back with uh, the rest of my mappings. Okay, so off screen, I went through and I added the rest of my assignments. There's actually a couple more assignments, uh, a couple more changes I wanna show you on screen here. But first, let me just kind of go through each of the plugins that I've added and each of the effects that I've added to my smart controls. So after the Tremolo plugin, I've added the tape delay. And so for the tape delay, I have a button here to turn on or off the tape delay plugin. Then I have the delay amount, which is just uh, controlling the wet signal in the delay. And then I have delay feedback as well. Now for synthesizers, I often like to use feedback as a creative effect. So I'll often push the feedback above 100% and then pull it back to create some cool sort of effects that kind of linger on for a while, especially this is helpful when you add a reverb after the delay. But I don't want my uh, delay macro control or smart control to go all the way up to 600%. 
really I want this to max out at about 120, 125%. So one of the things you can do here in the inspector is you select the control and you can set the minimum and maximum range for the control. So I'm gonna set the max range to 125. So now when I have the delay plugin closed, I can ensure that the level is only, whoop, that's actually 126. Let's, oh, okay, for, so for some reason it's, okay, 126. It, it's quantizing the value to 126 for some reason. But anyway, um, if I pull up the delay amount, it's never gonna go past 126. So that's what I want. Uh, next up, I have two reverbs. I have chroma verb on here. And for chroma verb, I'm just using a synth hall reverb. So I've got this labeled as hall reverb. I've got an on off switch. And then the hall reverb just adjusts the wet amount of the reverb. Now, one of the things you might want to do is as you pull up the wet amount, you may want to pull down the dry amount just a little bit just to, to really accentuate uh, the reverb. So one way you can do that is you can uh, essentially use the smart controls as macro controls, meaning that it's a single knob that controls multiple parameters. And to do that, you just select the knob, you go over to the inspector, and you can see the chroma verb wet is already learned. What I can do is click here and select add mapping, and this will add a second mapping. So here's the wet, and here's our second mapping. So with the second mapping selected, I just click learn, and then I move the dry slider up here. What I need to do though, is I need to invert the dry control because I want the dry to go down, not up. So I'll just, with that selected, I'll select invert. And now you'll see that they are moving in opposite directions. But I, I don't want the dry signal to come all the way down. I just want it to come down a little bit, maybe down to like 70% as its bottom value. So once again, I'll select dry over here and I'll set the range from 70 to 100%, just like so. So now with this all the way down, there's no reverb, dry signal 100%, all the way up, wet signal 100%, dry signal 70%. So that's a way you can create macro controls with these as well and control multiple effects with a single knob. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that off. The next, um, uh, the next reverb I have is Valhalla Shimmer. So yeah, this works with third-party effects. Once again, I have an on-off switch to turn the effect on and off. And here, Valhalla Shimmer just has a mix blend knob, so there's not a separate wet and dry. So I'm just controlling the mix blend here. So go ahead and turn that down to its starting value, turn off the plugin. And then lastly, I have a gain plugin. And the gain plugin is after everything else. And this is just an output gain adjustment. So if you find that some of these effects are causing uh, the channel to clip or to be too loud or maybe even too soft, you can sort of trim the output gain here. So it just gives you an output gain control. So that's it for the audio effects. But I also have one more here that says arpeggiator rate. The cool thing about this is, like I said earlier, you can map any control in any plugin. And that also includes MIDI effects plugins. So I have the arpeggiator pulled up at the top here. And what I've done is I've set the arpeggiator with an on and off switch. And I've also set uh, and I've mapped the rate of the arpeggiator. So I can control the rate of the arpeggiator from here. Okay, so before I play any audio examples, let me show you how to save this as a channel strip setting so that you can recall this at any time. What I like to do is I actually like to remove the instrument so it's just a blank instrument with a bunch of effects and a MIDI effect. And if you're mapping any controls within the instrument itself, obviously you wouldn't want to remove the instrument, but this is sort of like an effects preset channel strip that I can apply to any instrument. So that's why I'm leaving it blank. So then what I'll do is I'll go to setting, I'll go down to save channel strip setting as, and I'll give this a name. So I'll call this synth preset. I already have one labeled 01, so I'll label this 02. And now if I ever want to recall this whole set of smart controls again, all I have to do is click on the setting tab at the top of the channel strip, go down and select synth preset two. It's a bit off screen there, but, and there you go. It's, you can see that it loads up all of those smart controls and everything is uh, already mapped for us. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to open up any of these plugins. 
we can do all of the effects controls from here. I'll just load up Retro Synth. Okay, let's pull in the arpeggiator. Let's maybe pull in the filters. So this is a great situation where maybe I want to use the output gain to trim the level. If I want to add some distortion pre and post filter, that's going to raise the volume level quite a bit. So what I'll do is I'll add the output gain. Actually, you don't have to turn it on. I just have it on by default. Let's pull in the tremolo. And so I have my own custom set of sound design and synthesis controls here to shape the tone of my synthesizer sounds. And I never have to set this up again. These are all set here for me. And like I said, I tend to use a lot of the same types of effects to shape the tone of my synthesizers. So everything is just ready to go right here. And I don't even have to open up any of these plugins. And I can load this on as many instruments as I like. I just have to load up the channel strip setting and then I choose an instrument and then start playing around with the controls. Now, the other thing that's you know really awesome about this is this is not just for synthesizer controls. This can be used for mixing presets, EQ presets, compression presets, mastering presets. So you can adopt this same technique for really any application. And then, you know, like I said, you do a little bit of work up front, so you don't have to do as much work later. Everything is already pre-assigned. So I find this a huge time saver and a great way to sort of improve my productivity. Now, there is one last thing I wanna show, and that is that you can assign any of these knobs to external knobs or faders on your MIDI controller. So for example, if I wanted to assign the hall uh, reverb amount here to a knob on my MIDI controller, all I would have to do is select that knob, click external assignment, and then move that knob or fader on my MIDI controller. And you can see that I'm able to control that now with my MIDI controller. And you can write this in as automation. That's the other great thing about it. You can write these smart controls in as automation. So that gives you a further degree of control over uh, these effects. So you're not having to you know, use your mouse so much. You can just pull up the preset, set up your external assignments, and then just go with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave this a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.